Okay. So I have my trading view up. Okay, you guys can all see this. Um, this is a trade that I took on Friday right here. So here's the logic behind this trade, okay? If we go to the 30 minute, we can see, I have so much stuff up. I know it's awful. Um, you can see all these swing points here, right? And so this, this was the last swing. I don't know why these are all like duplicates, but um, this is the last swing low, right? This high made this low. So we would expect a lower low, right? Which we got, so this high made this low, but now we broke above it, okay? So we make a higher high and then we pull back into here, right? And after pulling back into here, what did we do? We started to push up, push up, had a little break of counter trend structure right here with this push above this. So you guys can see that, right? Now I'm gonna focus on this trade and then I'm gonna delete all this stuff so I can go over it. But we had a little break of structure here, right? Higher low, relatively equal highs. Now this low started to really make that push up, a significant push up. And we traded above this. So we've now made a higher high. So my thought process on this, looking at price in here, is this was a previous high that made a low. This high made this low. This high made this low. This high made this low, right? Now we get a break above right here. Like I said, we push above this. So now this high is obviously invalid because whenever we got this push above, right, we broke this, but we also broke this here, right? So this is automatically invalidated. And after we invalidated this, that means this high is also invalid, right? So this high is invalid. Now we're trading right in here, okay? Trading right in here, knowing that this high is invalid. Let me go close my door real quick, one second. So knowing that this high is invalid means I expect price to trade through it. So expecting price to trade through it, right? We can see that we're approaching it with bullish structure very clear bullish structure on the lower time frames, right? So if I were to mark off the high, if I go back to the 30 minute, okay. If I go back to the 30 minute right here, we can see the high. I'll extend it. So clear bullish structure coming into this high. And what do I expect? I expected it to trade a little bit above it, but I also anticipated a really good push, right? Because I know, I know that whenever highs get invalidated, they form as areas of, or they function as areas of liquidity, right? So I'm looking at this, I'm seeing this bullish structure, and I know that we're approaching the high. So this is an easy demand level here. You can see low ran out, low ran out, right? So this low, or really these lows were taken out by this candle here. And we're just going up, going up, going up, knowing again that a higher time frame point of interest is this high because it's not valid anymore. So this high should not hold, right? So my original target was just above it, which you can see this is a really impulsive move because that high is not is no longer valid. That's why this push was so strong through that level, right? Now, going in, I secured partials right above it, but my target was here. Why was my target here? Because again, this shouldn't hold. And what's the closest thing, right, that we need to mitigate? It's this imbalance right here. So this imbalance had not been filled. This 
push up till this amount. So this is accounted for. This isn't, but it doesn't even matter. Like you don't need to take profit here because this is automatically invalidated. We're now bullish. So you don't expect this to hold, but it does function as an area of a potential mitigation and drop, meaning they're going to mitigate this buy to sell in here and then push price down a little bit. That's what you can expect. Now that's not what happened and it just blew straight through it. And why did it blow straight through it very impulsively? Because it's not valid anymore. Whenever you're trading against the trend, all the highs, like the lower highs in the case of a downtrend. So let's say you're in this downtrend, obviously. We're in a downtrend here, but then we reverse. So since we reverse, none of these points are valid. So don't expect them to hold. They're good for profit taking levels, but you can see that it clearly didn't work because it's against the trend. And now the crazy thing with this price action here is, so this is really clear demand, right? Now, would I have looked to buy it here? Yeah, I would have if we hadn't pushed up, pulled back and then made a higher high relative to this. So you make a higher high relative to this high. And then we had this very clear demand right here. So this is all demand or the, they, these lows were liquidity, okay, obviously. So we had this low, so low, low, run out, higher high. So consolidate, if you guys watch the videos, you know, consolidate, manipulate, BOS, right? So consolidate, manipulate, run the lows, BOS, and test, okay? So we get that test here. So entry was, again, at the open of this candle, Stop loss was below, it was like a one point something pip stop. And then the target was this area of Im imbalance up here. Now I didn't do this because I was busy and I placed this trade literally right before I left, but you could have done this, like this is completely valid. What do you see? Test of the demand, push up higher high relative to this high. Now here's demand, chop, 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 and then go. So your demand level is right in here. What happens? Perfect test and go. Now what happens here? Higher high relative to this. And one of our members caught this. Like this is how, this is the way that I trade personally. Um, so higher high, lows, run out. And then so consolidate, manipulate, break a structure here and then go. Then you guys can see this. So this is consolidation within here. You run the high, run the low, and then this is your demand area, like all in here. Test, go. Now this is bullet or bearish counter trend structure. BOS here with this push up, what happens? Here's demand. You can see with this wick right here. Oops. You can see with this wick right here, ran out this low by the spread like if you'd gotten in here this wick would have taken that out by the spread uh well not, not so much in the case of buys but depending on your feed like that's why they do these double tests so you could have entered here on this demand because you got to break a counter trend structure then you test and went so you could have gotten like four entries on it one here right one here one here and one here and they all would have been really, really great risk to reward, or they would have all had really good risk to reward. So if you can see this one, the one that I caught was like a one to nine and a half. This one here, if you're targeting the same area, which there's no reason not to, here, one to eight, here, and like, you do need to have a lot of confidence to trade like this. Like, I'm not saying it's like, oh yeah you just you know just do it and then it'll you know work out it like but when you get up a one-to-one -one here you're risk-free when you get up a one-to-one -one here you're risk-free and then when you get up a one-to-one -one here you're risk-free so then like now you have all these positions just open and running but like no risk on the table now this one isn't as clear as the others but it is legit and you could have taken it again so at the open right of this candle stop would have been here target the same area so combined it's like we'll say 10 8 so 18 6 
24 and then 30 like but here's the thing so it's 30 rr total but the whole thing is like you can't expect price to do this all the time like this was a particularly easy day on euro usd and it's because it was just it had a really clear target the target was the high here that didn't hold and once it got past that it just went because everything else once it takes that high like nothing else is expected to hold because you're just trading against the trend you're in an uptrend and you have all these supply areas to the left the banks know people are going to try to sell at the supply so they just go 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 and it just attacked all of these it attacked this high it attacked this imbalance it attacked this imbalance and it never stopped so i'm not giving you guys like the get rich quick you know mindset like oh forex is easy like no this isn't easy you have to have a lot of confidence to do this but from a perspective of structure and a perspective of just following the order flow like this it doesn't get much easier than this honestly it just doesn't it's demand bos test demand bos test right demand now why didn't why didn't it come back down all the way to here because this is the move think of everything in a cause and effect relationship this is the move or the demand that actually caused this new high to be created. It wasn't this. This demand caused this push, but the, the actual BOS occurred from the demand right here. So that's why it tested this, not all the way down here. But you can see demand, BOS, test. Demand, BOS, test. Like it just happens over and over and over. Um. Yeah, consolidate, manipulate, BOS, test. So the manipulate part in this equation can actually run on both sides. Yeah, you run liquidity on both sides sometimes. And then if you know where price has to mitigate. Yeah, and like if you know price is going towards a higher time frame area, you can just use that as like a magnet and be relatively confident that it will reach it. Um, it's not like guaranteed, but if you have a higher time frame POI and price is trending, you can be pretty confident or pretty certain that it's going to, that's where it's going. It's like you create this story of where price can go and you trade it to those areas, knowing that the higher time frame is gonna pull the overall market or the overall trend. So like we're in an uptrend for a reason. It's because we wanted to um, invalidate the highs because once the first lower high is broken, Once the first lower high is broken here, all of these, like this one, this one, this one, they're all invalid. And especially this one, because this is, you know, significant structure, they're all invalid. And that's why you get this really significant push. Okay, so I will answer that in one second. I'm going to go get more water because I'm going to keep talking a lot. So drop more questions in the chat while I get water. And then when I come back, we'll continue. All right, sorry about that. Anybody who knows me or has been on the live sessions, you probably figure out I drink a lot of water. It's because if I don't, I get migraines and migraines are awful. Um, I don't know if you guys know what those are, but they're like really bad headaches and they're not fun. So I try to avoid them at all costs. Um, so like looking at, honestly, like looking at what happened in Asian isn't super important to me just because what Asian does, like, I just, I don't even try to trade Asian. I don't look at what it prints. I don't 
try to base anything off of it. I look at more at London because what you'll see is if London session pushed down, New York session will push up. And if London pushed up, New York will push down. It's just kind of how the dynamics of the market, you know, it's just kind of how it works. It's, it's never guaranteed or anything, but um, for the most part, that's what happens. And you usually start <clears throat> getting some type of trend, like right at, right when the sessions switch. So you guys can see, I mean, this case, uh, it was just like trending up all day. So that doesn't highlight what I'm saying at all. But most of the time, you'll see that when London is trending up, like here, New York comes around, and then it pushes down. And it doesn't reverse until later in the day. But you can see up, 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 up right? New York starts to roll around, it starts to reverse, and then it actually trends to the downside. Um, this was a little something I was showing people that was just really annoying. I'm surprised this worked out so well, but avoid markets like this. Like you want to be trading with the trend and you want to be trading with structure because doing that will save you a lot of pain. Like honestly, it will. And I know someone asked earlier about trading with EMAs. Like personally, I just don't even bother with them. They're just going to confuse you. Um, and yeah, like, so the, I know I said I wasn't going to look at the chat, but I see it now. So uh, Asian, yeah, Asian consolidation with the breakout in the overall direction. Yeah, like if you see Asian consolidation and you're in a four hour uptrend, you'll want to see this and then go, not this. But sometimes you'll see this and then a breakdown to go like that because um, one of the like really popular smart money concept plays used to be consolidation and then run, go, test like that. But usually what ends up happening now is you'll get the consolidation, you'll get this, this, and then that. Then it just sweeps liquidity in the opposite side first, like the opposite um, direction of trend first, and then it'll run the liquidity to take the move in the right direction. Like if this wasn't an uptrend, it would run the highs, then the lows, because the running the highs would take you down, and that's in the opposite direction of the trend. And speaking of trend, I'm going to go over structure a little bit. You want to look at it in the most simple way. Look at it in the case of an uptrend, the highs or the lows that made the new highs. Like I used to get so confused if we were doing this and then I saw like this, like that, and then like that, like it literally doesn't matter until you break this high here because this is, let's see, where's the brush? So, boom, this low made this high. This low made this high. Now, until we break above this, there's no low that made a new high. So whatever happens within here, this is like, this is a range for trading. The low to the new high is like a, a range. You wanna be looking for buys within this range. And you can kind of confirm them like with all of this, like you can have little downtrend retracements. And like, I used to try to trade this and sell it down, which can work, but it's kind of tricky. But like seeing this, it's the same idea. So I'll change the color so you guys can see, maybe um, like this. So what you guys can kind of see, that's not a good color. That looks too much light. So what you guys can kind of see is with this, this is now counter trend, right? It's going down. So it's going down within this leg up. So I used to try to trade, like if it did this, failed to make a higher high, made a lower low, I would try to trade it like here and sell it, but it just doesn't work because sometimes you'll break the low again, which obviously make you money, but a lot of times it's just too consolidated and it, you don't ever really catch a real move until you see something like this. You'll get, 
boom, boom, boom. So now this little downtrend, this high made this low. So now we're bearish on the smaller time frames until we break this high. Where do we break this high? We break this high right here. This is the low that formed the higher high. So you don't expect price to trade below this. And now this is a range for trading from here to up here. This is a bullish range and you expect a pullback to go long. And typically that's what it's, that's what's best to do. Like don't try to trade against the trend or like the high that made the, or the low that made the high. So this is your bullish range. You're in an uptrend. Whatever happens in here doesn't matter. Only look for buys. Don't try to trade the counter trend down. And when you see a break of counter trend structure or counter trend, you know, order flow like this here, you break above, right? Break above, look for a pullback to continue in the overall direction of trend, which is higher highs and higher lows. Don't focus on all this crap within this range until you get a signal for buying it up. That's like something that saved me a lot. And it, I would always get confused. Yeah, the part, the part in between is just consolidation and the higher lows confirmed when it, yes, when it makes a higher high. So we only confirm it's a BOS if it breaks. Yes, exactly. So like this high or this low made this high. So now until we make a higher high, there isn't a low within here that produced that higher high. So this is just all consolidation and it doesn't really have any merit or like significance until we create this new high. And like I said, think of stuff in a cause and effect relationship. What actually caused this new high? This is the low that caused this new high. It's not the low here or here or back here. So then this is like your this point over here is your new structural higher low because it's the most recent low that actually produced that high. So I hope that makes sense. That's like a really thorough way of explaining it. Hold on. Okay. So that help everybody with structure you can drop yes or no and if you if it didn't help or if you have a question ask it typically price will come back to yeah typically it will come back to the like the origin that so that's what the supplier demand area is called it's like the origin of the break of structure so like here the origin the actual origin that caused the break of structure would be down here because this is the higher low that made the higher high and before any movement in the market like if you're in an uptrend there always has to be a sell to buy to push the market higher right so like they'll push price down consolidate and then go and this is just like demand or you can think of it as selling to buy because within this consolidation right um you can see we consolidate and this is selling 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 to buy it up they're gathering orders to push the market higher and that's that's the demand area and price usually will come all the way back down to that area. You rarely see this. Like people will get this. So this is gonna be like really drawn out discussion. So people will get confused with POIs right here because the banks know that people are now trading smart money concepts, which is, Honestly, I can hold these lives because like smart money isn't really a secret anymore. It's it, at first, like when I first started, it was very like secretive and like not a lot of people knew about it and it was not something well known. But with these concepts, like I, I can talk about them without worrying because I mean, you can find a lot of it. But with this, this is like inefficiency in the market. People buy it here 
and they think that it's just going to go up and reverse trend to continue higher because this is just a higher time frame area of imbalance. But now here's the thing. So within this leg, you had structure. And to head down, you had to break that structure. So now guess what? You're going against the structure here that the imbalance is quote, like, quote unquote bound within. So if you're going against that structure or that trend, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna push up really strong, respect this structure, and then just go lower. And where does it go lower to? To where the move actually started. It's like the cause and effect. This demand, caused the higher high. The imbalance didn't cause a higher high. The inefficiency didn't cause a higher high. The inefficiency is a result of the demand that is created down here. And these areas of demand can also be thought of as accumulate areas of accumulation. So like this here is accumulation that caused the higher high, right? And that, so you need to come back to the cause of a move to mitigate out, not at, like not within here. And this also goes with the idea of not going against the trend because to get back down, you have to be trending, you have to be in a downtrend. Even though higher time frame, you're in an uptrend. To get retracements down, you need to mitigate, right? Something within here and you'll mitigate it and you'll get a push up, but you'll just respect the structure because at this point, when you try to trade a demand area within here or an imbalance within here, but you're trending down, right? Then you you just end up getting stopped out because you can't expect price to just reverse to the upside like that's not how it works just buying at these areas and waiting or hoping for price to reverse does not work you respect structure and that's why it's important to always trade with like it's literally always the most important thing to trade with structure don't just so that's what bos was a guarantee yes like once you get a break of structure to the upside, that's what confirms the higher low. Here, one second. I, someone just set off my car alarm. Oh my Lord, it does not stop. So you can see, I apologize for the interruptions, guys. My life, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. I promise. That's that's how my life works. Uh, yeah, there was there was something on GU. This was something I looked at on GU that I just ended up missing because I'm an idiot. But you can see low run out bos to the upside right demand test test and then go so that's another thing that i kind of talk about when you get these tests or mitigations you'll see that price comes back to them twice or three times it's never like mitigate and go because they need to they need to collect these orders here, right? They need to gather them to actually push price higher. It's not like, I mean, you do get tests where you just like, and then go, but usually that's not what happens. They need to come back and collect all the orders. And then here they need to, in a lot of cases, you'll see that it mitigates once, goes like this, and then goes because they need to sweep a little bit more liquidity to get that really, really strong push to the upside. And then, yeah, so Frizz mentioned something the other day and I, I caught a sell right in here, right? Now, here's the reason why. So within this big move to the upside, we get this really strong push. And then there's imbalance here, not to mention that there's a huge sell to buy. Like, look at this. Look at how strong we push down. So we push down very quickly and then just immediately buy up, right? And I actually caught this buy up from this demand area here, but super strong sell to buy. So what are people gonna do? They're gonna be buying it up, right? They're gonna 
totally want to buy within here. And look at what happens. This is literally a textbook example of what I'm showing you guys. Right? So people buy up, buy up, buy up. What happens? This high made this low. What does price do? Trades like right into, it probably hit a Fib retracement, to be honest with you. 61.8 pretty much. And then it just kept going and going and going because, you know, this, this over here was a little bit of structure. You're going like this and like this and this here. So this is structure, but then we broke it really like right here. This is the low that made this high. We broke it, pushed down, and then so that tells me that, okay, now we're bearish. It was clear to see that we had bearish counter trend here because until we broke this, we were bullish. So this is the low that made the high. So we're trying to buy it within here, but we could see counter trend bearish structure and what happens? It just never reversed. Like even when it came all the way down to the origin of this, this move, it didn't reverse, it just respected. So we break this and I'm like, okay, we're definitely bearish now. We're still forming bear structure on the smaller time frames. I know for a fact people are going to buy it right here and expect it to go short or expect it to go long because they think it just needs to reverse from a POI somewhere over here, right? It needs to reverse because this is just too clear. This is such a big area of imbalance. Look how imbalanced the move is. Look at this huge sell to buy. And it does exactly what I said. It pushes up really, really strong. Look at how impulsive this is compared to all these other retracements. Very impulsive retracement. But what ends up happening is we just make a lower low. And then here, we continue. I literally sold it like right here because I was so confident that it was just going to continue down. Or it was, no, it wasn't right there. It was right here. So right when I saw this, this was supply here. I entered, put my stop above this and just sold it down because... I understand people are going to be buying it. And also you can see it's apparent that the banks knew people were going to be buying it or that it was a sensitive area of price because when it breaks through it, look how impulsive that leg is. This so I told this is like the lesson earlier where this is invalid, right? This whole sell to buy imbalance area is invalid. And then what happens when it's invalid? It just goes straight through it. Look at this candle compared to all the other candles around it. Right when it gets to that price, it's invalid. It just goes straight through and then ends up hitting a higher time frame POI a bit lower. So you guys can see what I'm talking about with following the trend. It's super important. Don't go against it, even if it's on the lower time frames, just because you have a really pretty looking point of interest on, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It, structure is structure, and it will, ex, price will respect structure until it doesn't. I know that sounds dumb, but like, this was a bullish leg to the upside. People were looking to buy it, but what does structure do? It just never, ever, ever broke. It just kept going down and 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 down, and down never breaking to the upside. And then it eventually traded below this low, making it bearish again, right? Now this pushed down. So this was bearish. And then now we're getting a really, really big retracement back to the upside. It's tricky to see, but it's not hard. You just need to follow structure at all times because just because you have a higher time frame POI, like if you're doing this, you have demand down here. It doesn't mean that you need to go long. Like you'll see sometimes this, then a huge reaction, but it'll respect this and just keep going short. And it can even reverse trend completely. That does happen at times. So don't just bank on higher time frame POI is working. Like follow the structure on all time frames because it is fractal and be aware of what the lower time frames are telling you because the lower time frames can sometimes save you from losing a trade because the structure never breaks like this. It'll just keep going. And then if you were to buy it here blindly, guess what? You lost. How could you have avoided losing by recognizing that we we're making lower highs and lower lows? James, do you ever use a 50% mitigation uh, of supply and demand zones? Would you just do straight off the open? Um, 
usually I do it off the open. And, like, it's just because, like, since I trade supply and demand, it's just easy, like, on EU here. Like, I'm not going to do the 50% of this because I don't want to miss it. And, like, this, this demand, I'm not going to do the 50% because I don't want to miss it. When you trade supply and demand, it's usually just – easier to trade it at the open because like you can see like this is a sell to buy if you did 50 percent it's like about the same but what it actually came into was the demand not the 50 percent like this yeah. is like to the t this isn't really to the t mm. i've be, i've seen like so many like times um trading like supply and demand and the my risk award could have been so much better if I just got in off the 50%. Like most of the time I do it off the open like you just because I just want to be in it and just be safe. But sometimes the trades can be so much better risk award if like you do trade it off the 50%. But like you said, it, it swings and roundabouts really. Right. And it's like, yeah, you can really increase your risk to reward. But at the same time, like if you miss that trade, you get no percentage gain. Like, yeah, exactly. Like you miss a hundred per shot or a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. Mm. So, I mean, it's not exactly that idea, but it's like if you go for a higher RR, then you risk not getting anything. Yeah, that's true. So that's kind of my perspective on that. No, that's bro. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, buddy. Um, so uh, I, I get it. That is for the risk entry, right? What about the confirmation entry? You know, the one you go with the wizard and everything. So you know exactly when to get in. Uh, low risk and high reward. So like finding the, the safe trades, you can go to like, for me, you can go to like the 10 second time frame on. I don't ever send screenshots of it because I have a plug in on my MT4 that gives me seconds time frames i don't do it on trading view i just i don't want to pay like 700 bucks a year to get the seconds time frame on there if i can do it for free on mt4 with my broker so it's really just like the same idea of waiting for counter trend structure to break so like you know entering here would have been risky because you're just going off a one minute demand, but on the 10 second, you could have picked up a BOS within here. And then it turns into the same idea of looking for a counter trend breaks before continuing to the upside. So that's kind of how I avoid that. Can I get a plugin, please? Thank you. Yeah, I can, uh, I can drop it in here. I'll just, I'll actually drop it now. I'm going to stop my share. And I'm going to put it in the chat. So give me just a minute. Okay, okay. Uh, do you use the wizard for entry or no? So for me personally, like, it it is helpful, but if I'm trading, like, the one minute, which is what I usually do, no, I don't, because it's not going to help me find entries on the time frames that I like trading, but... It is useful when you're looking at like the five minute or like the 15 minute and you're not getting in on really, really lower time frame POIs. So short answer is no, I don't. Long answer is what I just gave. Um, and then as far as, so as far as um, getting the seconds plug in, message me on Telegram for it because I don't know how well it's going to work if I drop it in this chat. And like when I try to drop it, it just doesn't let me paste. So message me and that goes 
for all you guys. I'll put my telegram in the chat. But yeah, that's how that's how I side stuff like risk entries is by looking at the lower time frame on like the 10 second. And it and then you just apply the same ideas that you would on any other time frame. But I mean, like, I know, I mean, you're in VIP and I see your chart, so I know that you know that. But that's for everybody else. Yes, sir. So um, let me go through. I'm going to see what else. Better just split your risk on the front end. Yeah, like you can, yeah, you can split your risk on like, half a percent on the open and half percent on the like the better rr entry personally i don't do that i just trade at the open because um i don't like i, I hate the thought of missing a trade because it feels way worse if you're watching price do exactly what you wanted it to do but you're not in because you want it to be, it's not greedy, but it kind of is. You can be certain that you're probably going to get filled at the open, maybe not at the, the risk entry. So then you're increasing how much money you make, but you're risking not getting in. And then you just watch price do exactly what you want. And you're just missing out. Like that's it, a shittier feeling than not having a higher RR. That's like my logic. And yeah, so like the other day I was talking about dumb smart money and dumb smart money is exactly this. Dumb smart money is buying here, right? Because it's a really big imbalance fill and a really big sell to buy. So dumb smart money is 100% buying there. But if you're aware, of the actual trend, you'll know that the supply and demand and the structure of the market will keep pushing you lower. Not that you're just gonna get this respected and just shoot up. I mean, you did, but it's exactly what I said. You get a really great reaction and then it just goes back down. So that's like a perfect example of dumb, smart money. How many I look at the GU, EU, and US 30, because usually when GU isn't moving, EU is moving, and when EU isn't moving, GU is moving. So that's kind of how I split them up. Smart money can stop working, but supply and demand, supply and demand cannot. Because that's like the actual order flow of the market, and that's where the orders are generated. And with any system, any trading system, or like literally anything, if you went back to um, like trading, like bartering in the old, I don't even know when, but like the barter system, right? There's supply and there's demand, and represented on a foreign exchange chart. This is where buyers and sellers agree on price. There's more demand for one currency than the other. Like GBP USD, it appreciates. So one great British pound is worth blah, blah, blah to the US dollar and it goes up. So it's appreciating. There's more demand for the pound and this is an imbalanced move because this is where price was agreed upon. That's represented by sideways market movement, right? They agree that price can stay within here and that it's relatively stable. But then you get movements like this where there's an influx in demand. So there's no supply. And then this is what creates imbalanced moves. But the markets need to be balanced. That's the market maker's job. They need to keep the markets balanced. So what they end up having to do is they end up having to come back to where the buyers and sellers agreed on price so they can mitigate and fix 
the inefficiency in the market. But then this is like a cyclical um, ordeal where there's agreed upon prices. So a balance between supply and demand, and then an imbalance. This is more demand than supply. And the opposite would be for sales, the opposite is literally this chart flipped upside down. So you guys can see or hopefully grasp that concept. This is where buyers and sellers agree on price. There's a balance between the supply and demand of a currency to another. And then with this move, it's called imbalance. And that's why it's called imbalance. It's not called imbalance because there's just like a really big candlestick here. It's imbalanced because there isn't an agreement between the price or there isn't an agreement between buyers and sellers on what the price should be. It's all buying here. This is more demand than there is supply. So you need to come back down and balance it out because the markets must be balanced in order for them to move efficiently. This will never stop working. Structure will never stop working because structure is driven by institutional sponsorship and they aren't going to just stop sponsoring or like the, the sponsorship that they use or have isn't ever just going to stop working. Like they have to inject so much money to make a higher high or higher low or whatever, depending on the trend. And that's, they can't just hide that. Like they can't just hide the fact that they injected all these orders to push the market up and that they had to sell, sell, sell and collect orders before they did. What they can hide or what they can make not work is imbalance because like having balance, imbalance be respected, it's just like they could stop here at this imbalance because smart money told you in the past that if you buy at an imbalanced candle, then you're, it'll probably go up. But now those concepts don't necessarily work. Like banks would trade with these concepts, but now they kind of don't. They trade with the actual order flow and structure of the market and what's really, really happening. What's not really happening is this is just an imbalanced candle. So it needs to get filled to push price higher. Like that's not what it is. What it is, is this is an, an entire imbalance move. And then this is where buyers and sellers were agreeing on price. And the banks need to come back down to that area to balance the market back out to make it efficient again. That's also why it's called inefficiency. So if there's a big imbalance candle that breaks structure, like if this whole move was created by like one big candle, I would still go all the way down here because the markets move based off of the structure and the supply and demand found within that structure, not, not the, the concepts mixed within like on GBP USD. Like this is a concept mixed within. This is just a random sell to buy inefficiency that people were buying at clearly. People were buying, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. It never actually broke structure. Can we go highlight um, like this area here as far as like, because I feel like from like, I think two days ago, we talked about how like to not confuse, like when you see a lower high, when you see a lower low and like how to like react off of that. Um, because like looking at this, I thought, let's say like, okay, like in this area, like I thought, well, is that breaking like structure or um, like, you know, like as far as like making sure that we're like sticking to the order flow of lower highs and lower lows, like how to not get confused in something like this um, to where price just continue to be like in a bearish, um, in a bearish market because, or something like this, like, what if we what if I thought here that this was a higher low being created and then but then I guess like here it didn't break that wick so that would still be considered a lower high but like yeah. something like this up here like you know because like like you were saying when you started learning like structure as far as lower highs lower lows and how they correlate to breaks of structure and you were saying how it was kind of like confusing that's kind of like what I'm like trying to clarify as far as like 
the order flow of the lower highs and the lower lows and what that looks like when it comes to candles. Because I know sometimes when we look at candles, some people are just like, ah, I don't really know though. It might look like it, but I don't really know. Yeah, so like for me, this is if, until it closes above this wick, it's still bearish. But even then, like this, this is all one leg to the downside, and this is the these. This is like the order flow within this leg. So even if you break above this, you're not bullish. Bullish. You're just like counter trend bullish but you don't expect to trade above this because this is the high that made this low right and then this is just those little legs are just the order flow that made or that this leg this entire push down is comprised of so if, even if you were to break this you could expect like so this is a higher low or a higher high compared to this. So you'd expect a higher low, a higher high, higher low maybe, but you wouldn't expect price to trade above here because this is the high that made this low on the higher time frame, And this is just intermediary movement. Does that make sense? Yeah, like my understanding is like, so basically big legs, contain order flow within them and order flow is literally just higher highs and higher lows and vice versa yeah it's like order flow is like i mean you can think of it like a couple ways but it's like this like so this is a leg to the upside all of this is order flow within this leg. But you can also zoom in and say that if you're looking like from this perspective, this is structure. Like this is just structure that we're following within the higher time frame leg. So it's like order flow makes up higher time frame legs. So like the higher time frame leg again is this push up. All of this is order flow, but within the order flow, like the order flow, that the order flow is leg or is legs as well. So like, and that sounds, it's so hard to say what I mean, but like order flow can become structure if you make that your higher time frame. Like if you're trading the one minute, this is structure. So then your order flow would be like 10 second candles. But this, all of this is order flow on the, like the five minute or the 10 minute. Does that make sense? My yeah, you said an order flow would be like if our order flow is on the one minute or like, let's say our order flow is on the one hour then our structure would be on like the 15 because you said like the one minute versus the 10 second so if we were to blow that up a little bit if we had order flow on the one hour then structure would be like on the 15 is that what you meant or did you mean or did you mean it the other way like uh, structure can be on the one hour but order flow would be on the 15 yes exactly okay it's a the structure is higher time frame. The order flow makes up the structural legs. So swing point should be the BOS we look for. Yeah, like swing points are like, it's like this. Low made this high, low made this high. So this is like the one hour. And then within, all of these, you have like 10 minute legs. Those 10 minute legs are the order flow. They're making up these higher time frame pushes. So it's the order flow. So like if the, the bigger picture is the one hour, right? Then these little legs 
might be like the 10 or 15 minute and that's the order flow comprising the bigger picture or making the bigger picture thank you i literally love this illustration so much thank you mm -hmm. what was that you just said then order flow makes the what sorry order flow makes the structure so like this okay. leg, this, so leg retracement, leg retracement. These bigger legs are mm. made or created by the smaller, these smaller pushes and these smaller pushes are the order flow. So then you could Wrong also- information, because someone told me order flow is like where the liquidity is and things like that. That's not how I think of it. No, but is, I believe you, I believe you. Yeah, I mean, liquidity is like, for me, liquidity is like its own uh, deal, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's like its own thing. Mm -hmm. I don't no, that's come. Yeah. Yeah. Structure could be one hour and order flow would be found on the 15. Your order flow is not going to be on a higher time frame than your structure. That's like the easiest way to remember it. It's the order flow makes up or creates the structure. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah market is fractal small candles make the big candles yeah exactly it's like eu you had a huge candle like right here it actually and it's funny because i was going to target this but i was like there's no way it's going to get all the way up there i mean of course it does but that would have been an absurd rr if you had taken it all the way up to there I like I wanted to, but it was Friday and I hate holding trades. I was like, oh, there's no way. But you know, of course it does. That would have been like a probably a one to fifteen. No, one to twenty. And it was just following the structure. You guys can see it. It's just test, go, test, go, test. And it's funny, it actually looks like this was a trend line. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, but I mean, I guess the trend line worked because it was being backed by structure and supply and demand. It wasn't just this, these moves weren't just random retracements. Yeah, all you do is find your swing points on the higher time frame, And then based on that, those targets, based on that, target your trades. Yeah, target your trades on the lower time frames based on the higher time frames, which is why like I talked about it the other day. If you're like this and now you have bearish structure, but you're there's like a big demand here. Don't I mean you can keep trying to sell it, but if it's like the actual origin of the move, don't don't be surprised if it breaks structure and stops you out to reverse. I'm not saying that you should like you should expect it to because it's a higher time frame area and those have more importance. But don't just assume structure holds until it doesn't. And if it doesn't hold, like in this case, because you trade it into a higher time frame POI, then you just react to the break of structure and start looking for buys. But you're not wrong to be selling it like there's a supply area right here you're not wrong to try to sell it but you need to be mindful of the fact that you are trading into a higher time frame poi and that that higher time frame poi in this case if it's a demand and an overall uptrend it can end up pushing it higher because it is a higher time frame point of interest Yeah, I think that's what we were saying the other day, too. It's cool that you brought it up again to where, like you were saying, you know, once we get to this, once we get to this point, price has an option of doing this, but it also still also validly has the option of doing um, of doing that, you know, and going the other way. So it's like what we're looking for is this point here are we going to make the lower high here are we going to make a higher high here and these and this these were the points that you were saying um the other day like hey like just wait 
for Price to show you that because you would be able to get in and, you know, um, either get into the reversal or get into the retracement. But wait to wait for Price to give you what I have circled in the black because I think we were talking like we were assuming that, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to give us, you know, the circle, the black circle I have here at the top. But what if it gives you the black circle at the bottom? You know, and that's what you were saying, like, wait to wait for Price to show its hand when it comes to stuff like that. Even though they're not, it's the complete opposite. So I'm sorry, I think that it's where it's going to have a higher price, right? So the price is going to be driven to the upside or it's going to be driven upward. But in the opposite scenario, when the price, when the thing is available in a huge number, it's going to become cheaper, right? So the price is going to fall. So he talks about supply and demand, which is related to what? It's related to stocks. It can be. What's so like, wait. So, so it can be, and it it can be uh, uh, related to forex. But I don't really trade supply and demand. I and I never understood, or I never learned about supply and demand. So I don't care about this. What I care. Wait. Okay. I'm Ariel. I'm sorry. I was kind of interrupted. I just kind of wanted to get your feedback on this before we moved on to whoever's just talking who interrupted me because I didn't really get your response on what I just drew. For the black circles that I have. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, like, it's more, there's a higher probability that you break a, that you break the counter trend to continue higher because it's a higher time frame point of interest. And this can happen. And as soon as it trades below this, like, if, the, if you had, if you want to get rid of those, like, if you're doing this and you break this here, like clearly trade below it, then this is invalid and this is invalid because this is the high or the low that made this high. And then once you trade below it, none of these are safe anymore. They're not protected. So they function as points of liquidity. And then that's when you get reversals and trends and pushes back down. Now, did that help? Yes, it did. Yeah, it definitely did. Okay. And then, so I want to ask whoever was talking about it, what, like, how do you trade? I think he may have left. Head and shoulders, probably. <laughs> right, he's just being a hater. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you can sit here and tell me it doesn't work and you're entitled to your opinion, but I honestly don't care, so... Says the guy that joined this call, but there we go. Uh, you know, the, pro the problem with traders is this, right? Most everybody is looking for the holy grail. There's no holy grail. You have to yes. put in the book and get your signature, right? I uh, Talking to you guys, I'm in ICT mentorship. I'm in area. I'm in Fanto. I'm in different uh, mentorship. You can only get taught, you know, but the problem is you, right? Nobody can force your hand to trade it. You only see price action by yourself. And until you experience it and know how to approach it, understand the signatures you see and, you know, comprehend your model of entries and how you want to interpret structure, order flow, you will just be wasting your time, right? Uh, I, I got to understand that when I went to other mentorship and I realized you guys have been saying this, they said it differently. So I was like, okay, the problem is not with the, the, the program. The problem is with me assimilating Put on the walk in the chat. It's not, it's not, and one big thing is journaling. You fail and you know when not to fail. You know, if you don't journal, you don't know how to to increase your odds. It's a game of probabilities, right? You keep taking the trades, risking 1% or 0.5%. At the end of the day, it adds up to be profitable because you are doing it, doing the right thing. You know, you can get an analysis right at the same time. The trade might go against you, right? It's what it is. It's part of the business, you know. That, that's the way I see it. So, yeah, and like, I mean, just to vouch for you, like, so he is, the individual just spoke, he is in the VIP, and you can tell, and there are a few people in here who are in VIP, and you can tell who understands it and who doesn't understand it, and it's a direct result of how hard you try. Like, the re part of the reason I hold these is for my own good as well. Okay, If I have to sit here and explain trades to you guys, it completely 
forces me to break them down on a very like specific level. And it's important to like actually try. Like, I don't know who it was, but the person who comes in here is like, I don't get this. I blah, 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 blah. I don't care if you don't get it, but I'm telling you that it works for me and that no BS, this is how the markets actually, actually move. And if you, but it doesn't matter. I know people who trade retail and they're fine, but it, you need to find a way, like he was just saying, find a way that works for you and be consistent with it. Like there's no holy grail, which is something else he said. There's no holy grail. And this is like kind of in the psychology part. I think I've covered a lot of like technical stuff with you guys today. So the psychology part of it, I'm going to check the chat real quick. So yes, it's trade management is most important. And like it trade management and yeah, like, so Tombo said, it's more like your mindset, which is honestly trade management is a big part of it because your trade management is affected by your mindset. Um, like if you're greedy and you don't secure partials or move your stops, it can affect you really, really badly. And like you, it's more about how you manage your losses and how you manage your wins. It's not really... The strategy is important, but it's not a big part of it. It's reacting to what it's showing you and knowing that like you do have an edge. So that's what you need to focus on. And you can't, especially trading like lower time frames like me, like if I lose like two or three times in a row, I can't care because if I do, it's gonna mess me up. I just had to keep taking trades. And like with Euro USD the other day, I mean, I had to leave. And that was part of the reason I didn't hold a live yesterday. I was gone all day, but I'm telling you, there have been days where I've caught like three or four entries all at once. And before I know it, I have like three trades running with zero risk on the table and they just are going straight to take profit. Like you can't get emotional, but it's a good feeling because you're trusting your analysis and you're being like, unattached to the trades and you're just letting it do its thing you can't really be emotional and it's really hard not to but you have to trust everything there's not a holy grail i promise there's like no i mean some things can help but you're not going to find a system that just absolutely works 100 percent of the time but i know people who trade retail methods and I literally have no idea how they do it or how he does it, but he's like really, really good. And he wins like almost every trade he takes. I have no clue why or how, but it works for him. And you just need to find something that works for you. And then you need to stick with it because everybody's going to trade in a different way. So don't feel like you have to trade my way. Um, if you think my way is bullshit, you can go ahead and tell me, but it's how I trade. And it's how a lot of people trade because it's actually the dynamics of the market. Markets don't move off of trend lines or support and resistance. Support and resistance isn't actually, it kind of works, but it only works whenever there's order flow backing it up. Trend lines definitely do not work. Don't use trend lines ever. Um, using indicators also doesn't work. They all lag. So. James, how long would you say it took your uh, your mindset to kind of be where it is now, or your psychology? Um, or is it kind of like an ongoing thing? I can imagine it is. Yeah, it's kind of it's ongoing. Like I still mess up. Honestly, I do. Um, mm -hmm. It happens, but it's hard not to. Like when you're trading with your money, it's difficult to not let it get to you. But yeah. You just have to like, you have to really just understand that it's about probability more than anything, because when you do that, you don't really like worry or fret. You're just like, there's a greater chance of this happening. If it does happen, that's great. If it doesn't, I've controlled my risk and I'm fine. Like that's yeah. like the mindset you have to have. And mm -hmm. but the hard part is getting that because like, until you do, it's hard to stop your psychology. So like, you need to have 
enough psychology to trust the statistics. And then when you trust the statistics, you don't have the psychology that's causing you to not trust statistics. It's hard to explain, but it's just, it's like, no, no, I get you. It's like, yeah, it's like the loop that people fall into. Hmm. So I always think as well, if you're using like correct risk management, I found personally that my psychology is a lot, lot less like going crazy. Like if I've got a trade in and I know exactly how much I'm losing, my stress levels are way lower down because I know exactly how much I'm going to lose at that particular time rather than looking at my uh, phone and being like, shit, how much am I losing? Like, do you know what I mean? I think. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, accept. you need to like accept it and be like, okay, if I, if I lose, like this is how much I'm actually going to lose. Am I okay with it? And then if yes, then good. If not, then reduce your risk, but don't mm. just like, and then if you don't trust your risk or like use the right risk and then you lose a trade, you're like, man, I should have, I shouldn't have done that. I should have trust my risk. And then that's all you can think about. Yeah. And it just makes it worse. It just, it's like a snowball. Like if you just mm. trust your risk management, that's like one of the biggest steps. Yeah. So yeah. No, I hate that's, that's and, what, and what they all want to say, like I'm a year in with like smart money and the area affects community. Like, like this shit really don't happen overnight. <clears throat> Like it, I'm, I'm a year in and things is just now really starting to pick up for me. Like my understanding of the market is is now getting like better. Like it, it really does take time, but if you consistent with it, it it's going to pay up eventually, though. Yeah, like I mean, I I never thought that I'd be trading like the way I'm trading. Like I'd see people, I'm like, oh, I couldn't do that. I would trade with like freaking I like a year ago. I tried to trade with just trend lines. I had a system based around just trend lines. It's just the stupidest thing ever. It's so dumb. But it's part of like learning. And uh, <laughs> Nate and Aiden, the couple other partners in here, when they first started trading, they <laughs> both funded an account. They were in college, so they didn't have a lot of money. They funded an account and they bought Bitcoin on like a 0.01. But you know how pips work on Bitcoin, so it's very volatile. And they're like, they just bought it because it looked like it was going to go up. They're like, oh, it's low. It's going to go up. So they just bought it, and then they bought it a couple more times. And then before they knew it, they just blew their entire account, like, the first day they started trading. So it doesn't matter where you start. And for, like, my – when I first started trading, I tried to use algorithms, and I just – like blew my account and I was like sitting there in Las Vegas like wow this is really great because I just lost a lot of money it's all part of it honestly yeah like learn learn from everything that's why journaling is important yes sir uh please right i just wanted to say this because I, I struggled with everything i did algorithm i funded blue funded accounts i blew personal accounts tens of thousands i did the iml the epic followed all those bandwagons and everything you know it all boils down there's a lady right uh she teaches free on uh, on youtube and, you know, she told me, she was in ICT mentor, she was a charter member, you know, everybody like, oh, ICT and all that crap. But the whole thing, she told me, ICT is good, but market structure, it's very important. Yeah. ICT might help you with entries, but market, I was like, oh, she doesn't want me to get in, right? And I got into ICT, reading, studying, I was like, you know what, this is too much work for me. Let me put it on hold, right? But the whole point, what I'm trying to say is um, if you're teaching structure, like you started teaching structure from 30 minutes, so many people might get confused, right? I think it makes more sense, you know, coming from the daily, you know, to the, maybe the four hours, the one hour, the 15 minutes, and okay, your entry could be in five minutes. Something like methodological, right? It, it could help a lot of people's psychology to adapt easily. For me, I struggle with that a lot. And I find consistency and I can't believe I get into trades in 15 seconds now. Right? Like, no, that's not me. Maybe some guy just got into me and all that. But putting in the work, understanding, following a process repeat, uh, repeatedly, right? It just works. It becomes your subconscious. So like, um, I don't know if you, if you can do like a top down, maybe on EU and any pair, just start maybe from the higher time frame, okay? It, it, it gives, because the higher time frame truncates the lower time frame. So it gives that sort of protection, knowing where you are, 
where you're coming from, why you should be taking whatever trade from, whatever lower time frame you're taking it from, and all that. So I don't know if that sounds uh, good, sir. Yeah, so now for today, like, I don't, for today, I'm not going to have time. But what I can do is, honestly, I'll just, I'll hold a live session tomorrow as well. And we will just do, I'm not going to make it super long like these. And if you're in favor of it, just drop in the chat, say like, hi. I'll just do like a 20 or 30 minute live where I just systematically go and break down structure on like EU or GU. And I'll just break it down as thoroughly as possible and explain like from a technical definition or like the technical definition of structure, how should we be viewing it? And then I'll obviously record it and upload it, but I could do that tomorrow in the middle of the day again, because I think a lot of people are able to join in the middle of the day. So I can definitely do that tomorrow. But today, I sadly, I have other stuff to do that I planned and I can't stay on for too much longer. And I want it to be like good. I don't want it to just be like a little breakdown. Like it, it would be very in depth. I had a question. Um not necessarily like kind of what he was talking about, like the like a longer process. I just had a question about like your journey. What was a game changer for you when you started placing like your best stop losses and when you began to successfully trail your stops? Because like you said, like, you know, it's wisdom with you explaining that the goal is to get to the point to where I know how much I'm risking, like the dollar amount of what I'm risking. If I have a hundred dollars in my account and this trade loses, maybe I lose $7 and I'm okay with that, but maybe I gain, you know, 45. That's cool too, either way. But like, what was the game changer for you when you started placing like your best stop losses and your, um, and your um, trailing stops to then thus better um, and increase, give like cushion to the risk management um, if, if on top of what you had already had. So, okay, so this will be the last thing we talk about, but like I want everybody to like pay attention. So for me, I'm still growing. Like I do still mess up. I still, sometimes I'll do something. I'm like, that's just stupid. Why'd you do that? I'm not to the point yet where I'm like a robot. Like there are some people I need to be, but there are some people who really are like, they just follow their plan perfectly every time. And I still have work to do. So I want to start off by saying that, but the thing that really changes you is like, how bad do you want something? Like how bad do you actually want to be able to trade for a living? How bad whenever life gets serious and you, I mean, I don't know how everyone, how old everybody is, but I just turned 21. So like, this is for me, I'm like, this is what I want to do. And if I want to be good at it and do it for like a living, like in the future and make a lot of money from it, I better be good, you know? And yes, I am a good trader, but how bad do you want it? Like, if you really want to be good, are you going to slack off on journaling? If you really want to be good, are you not going to listen to your risk management? If you really want to get better, are you not going to join the calls? If you really want to be the best, are you, you know, like being honest with yourself and asking you, like asking yourself, how bad do I actually want this? That makes you follow your rules because it's a fact and everybody says it. Every professional trader says it. If you want to be good, you need to follow your rules and be systematic. If you actually want results, you need to follow what you come up with and you need to be consistent and you need to, you know, dedicate and be disciplined. Like you need to dedicate time to it and be disciplined and everything else follows. But you don't really kickstart wanting to be disciplined and wanting to be very dedicated until you tell yourself or convince yourself or whatever that this is really what you want to do and you really want to be good when you tell yourself or remind yourself this is what i want i want to be good this is what i want to do that really kicks it into gear for you to follow the rules coming up with the rules isn't hard i can sit here and come up with rules all day and tell people how to trade but if they don't follow them they're not going to work what really makes you follow them isn't just sitting there and saying, I want to follow them. It's sitting there and saying, 
I want to be successful. I want to do this. I want to be good. And I know for an absolute fact that I need to follow the rules to do that. And the only reason you can convince yourself of that, at least for me, was to tell myself that this is what I want to do. And damn it, if I want to do it, I need to be really serious. So that's my advice. I don't know how much that helps, but and it might not work for everyone, but that's what did it for me was just saying, if you want to be that good, if you want to be that serious, you need to do everything that the professional traders are telling you to do. And what they all tell you to do is to come up with rules and to follow them because coming up with rules is not an issue. You can sit there and write them, but until you follow them, they're not going to work and you're not going to be consistent. So that's my advice. Yeah, Jimmy, to add on on that, right? For yeah. my rules, it makes it easy for me. I use the anchor text and I have my rules. If I'm looking at my POIs, there are certain things I want to see. If I don't see it, it's not valid. I need to know my uh, liquidity uh, inducements areas. I need to know my uh, uh, top-down analysis, right. my entry points. You know, I have it on my screen, so I just put it in there. When I'm done with it, I take it off. I put it in there. So it's easier that way. Maybe that could help anyone using the anchor text. Yeah, exactly. Like I see it in your charts. That's really good. That's like that's a really good way of doing it. So, I mean, I hope that kind of helped all you guys, like with what kicks you into gear to like actually follow what you say you're going to do. It's just telling yourself how bad you actually want it. James, what time do you think you'll be doing a session tomorrow? Um, hopefully earlier than today. I had a lot of stuff come up, but tomorrow's Sunday, so it won't be too bad. Probably 12 CST, 12 to 1 CST. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's perfect. So, yeah. Sweet. So, that for today, that's it. Um, tomorrow, we'll, like, specifically go over structure. It might be a good idea to start covering, like, one thing a day. But, I mean, I went over a lot of technical stuff today again. And then tomorrow, we'll focus solely on structure and have a shorter meeting. So, that's, I guess, that's what's in store. Sweet. Let's do it. But I will post this to YouTube. And you guys will be able to go watch it. So I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Perfect. Thank you for your time, James. We appreciate it. Yep. No problem. Sweet. Catch you tomorrow. Yep. See you guys. See you later. You're welcome, guys, in the chat. <laughs>